everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. This week we had nine drivers in action that included road racing at Coda, pro late models on the west coast, pro trucks and quarter midgets in Florida, and legends in Georgia. What a week! But before we get to the results, it's time for this week's track lap with Fast Pasta as he takes us around the 20 turn 3.4 mile road course better known as Coda. Hey everybody, it's race week at Circuit of the Americas, which means it's time for another track lap with Fast Pasta presented by Logitech G. So let's start our lap here on the front straightaway, coming up through the gears and heading into turn one. We're gonna climb three stories and we're going to be on the brakes really hard since there's a lot of extra grip while braking uphill. Really sharp corner right here. You kind of want to grab the back side of it if you can. Really hard to hook those rears up since you're headed downhill into turn two. Work the throttle here and set up for the S's. This is one of the most challenging parts of the track. Very technical. You need to be able to change directions with your car very well. And you can't use much curbing with those big turtles right there. This is an interesting portion as well, coming through turn six. Kind of slow and flowy, really fun part. A couple passing zones in here, actually. You can use a lot of curbing right here to set up for this next one. We can use a lot more there in real life. That curb is not actually there. Um, high speed kink right there. Really hard to not get free over that since it's downhill and kind of off cambered back down through the gears a little bit of compression there a little bit of uphill braking zone you can use a lot of racetrack on exit but it's important you straddle this exit curbing because those rumble strips could actually shake the back of the car loose uh, which can create quite the difficult scenario for a driver especially in your qualifying lap where you're trying to go as fast as you can really heavy braking to turn 12 that back stretch is the fastest part of the racetrack and then we head into the stadium section which is even slower and more technical, in my opinion, than that previous slow section. A lot of guys like to roll through here in second, instead of grabbing first just to help with wheel spin, but you can straight line this part. So all those twists and turns are kind of deceiving because you can carry a lot more speed through there. Should have been in first right there for sure. Uh, but we're gonna come here, head into the carousel, which is really hard to manage the rear grip through, especially your because you're asking so much out of that left rear throughout a run, leaning on it a lot right here, and you gotta be able to set up for this next left-hander of 19. You can cut that curb almost entirely, let it run out to keep your momentum up. Unfortunately, we're gonna get a slowdown here on iRacing. Uh, come back through turn 20 and head back to the finish line. So really cool track, uh, really fun. Definitely one of the most amazing facilities on the schedule uh it's just so phenomenal the fans are great such a beautiful part of the country and uh it's definitely neat to be racing on a formula one track so stay tuned and watch the race this weekend thanks anthony this racing facility is one of the premier venues in the world and not only plays host to nascar but also f1 the u.s grand prix and Moto Grand Prix for you two-wheel fans. This should be one on everyone's bucket list. I know it's at the top of mine, but let's get right to the results. We start with Anthony Alfredo, who was making his third start at Coda this week in the number 78 pit boss BJ McLeod Chevrolet. Anthony took the green flag from the 30th position as several cars had to go to the rear for making mechanical adjustments after qualifying. Anthony ran mid-pack for most of the race, finishing stage one in 21st and stage two in 30th. In the final stage, he raced his way back to a 16th place finish. Here's what he had to say after the race. Well, how about that? Came from the back twice to finish 16th. Had a pretty fast Pitboss Chevrolet Camaro for the Pitboss 250 here at Circuit of the Americas. Now we're off to Richmond Raceway next weekend where I've got double duty. I'm running both the NASCAR Xfinity Series race and the NASCAR Cup Series race, so I'll see you there. Up next, as you heard, both Xfinity and Cup 
this weekend at Richmond Raceway. Sheldon Creed was also at Coda in his number two, Wheel and Engineering RCR Prepared Chevy Camaro. Sheldon has proved to be one of the top road racers over the years, and this weekend was no difference, as he put up the fourth fastest time in qualifying. Sheldon took the lead at the drop of the green, led a total of 16 laps throughout the race, and collected 19 valuable stage points by finishing second in stage one and first in stage two. Sheldon was leading late in the race before getting turned by eventual race winner A.J. Allmendinger with 14 laps to go. Sheldon regrouped and was running back in 21st, but made a huge run through the field, eventually finishing in the top 10 in ninth. Sheldon currently sets eighth in points heading into Richmond this weekend. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we'll check in on Connor Mozak and Caden Honeycutt, who rounded out the four race face drivers competing at Coda over the weekend. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Introducing race face digital collectible cards. Buy, sell, and collect MP4 digital cards. Representing the next wave of superstar drivers. Collect them all. Standard, Premier, 3D Elite, Victory Lane, and Throwback. Showcase your cards in your very own pit collection. Fan enrollment is free. Visit racefacedigital.com today. Welcome back. Connor Mozak was looking forward to returning to Coda due to the results he's had in the past in the Trans Am TA2 series. Connor qualified 22nd in his number 24 Sam Hunt racing Toyota Camry. Connor finished stage 1 in 17th, stage 2 in 17th, and eventually brought home a 19th place finish. Here's a short recap video from the weekend. Today marks the 75th time the NASCAR Xfinity Series has gone road racing, and today we're doing it deep in the heart of Texas. Up next for Connor, Richmond Raceway this weekend. Caden Honeycutt was back in the 04 Roper Racing CarQuest Ford F-150 for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Expel 225. This was the first time Caden had ever been on a road course outside of turning some laps on his simulator. Caden qualified 24th but had to replace a radiator resulting in a 35th place starting position. It did not take long for the Texas driver to start his move towards the front in what was a pretty clean race outside of one incident. We caught up with Caden on Sunday for his recap of the race. What's up everybody, Caden Hunnicutt here, getting finished up at Coda for my first ever road course race. And we finished P15 after a relatively clean race. Um, was ended up in, uh, getting some stage points. I think we were playing the strategy. We ended up finishing 18th in the first stage and we actually was running six in the second stage till the second to last corner. I uh, had some contact, but um, it was a racing deal. We gathered back up quickly and was able to um, finish eighth in that stage. There was a yellow directly after that, so that helped us out a little bit. Um, restarted, I think we restarted like 27th, I think. And then uh, we were able to work our way out all the way back up to 15th in those last closing laps. So 
Um, I just appreciate the effort from Roper Racing Team, uh, Bruce Cook, uh, Chris, Craig, Corey Roper for all the hard work, Nick as well. Um, CarQuest, Ford, uh, Ford Performance for the help as well. Just a lot of people just put a lot of hard work in, into the into these trucks every week. And um, next week is going to be at my home track that I've been looking forward to ever since I've been a little, and that is Texas Motor Speedway. And I cannot be more excited and more prepared to uh, to go and race there. So um, we're going to take this momentum. We got a really good truck. So we've had a really good run so far, and we're going to continue to push and and uh, try to have a good run at Texas Motor Speedway next weekend. So we'll see you guys then. Up next for Caden, Texas Motor Speedway on April 1st. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we'll get up to speed with Casey Klein, Grant Thompson, and Cole Denton. Do you need to promote your brand? Need a new website or logo? Or maybe a professional marketing deck? Then Victory Lane Design can help you, so check this out. to race face digital collectible cards are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand want to connect with your fans give sponsors more exposure and earn income from all card sales then race face digital has you covered digitize your brand with five different collectible cards enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series visit racefacedigital.com today welcome back Casey Klein was making his first start at Kern County Raceway in his number 88 Nate Clower Motorsports Pro Late Model. Casey was top three in both practice sessions and then backed that up by setting on the pole for the 60 lap winner showdown feature. We caught up with Casey right after the race. Hi, I'm Casey Klein. This weekend I was racing at Kern County Raceway Park. We had a good car on practice on Thursday. We showed up a day early because I had never seen the track before. And then on Friday, we made minimal changes to the car to keep it good. And we were top three in practice pretty much the whole day. Then Saturday, we went out and we practiced and we ended up finishing third in final practice. Then we went and qualified and we qualified on the pole. We ended up having a tie for first and second. And since I ran the lap first, I got the pole. Then we had a hill draw, I ended up drawing seventh and ended up losing a couple spots on the first initial start. Then I worked my way back up to about fifth and then we had a caution and I had another problem on the start, lost two spots and I was able to battle my way back up to third by the end of the race. I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Damer Farms, Mountain View Players, Sporty Steakhouse, Farmer Beating Seed, Klein's Auto Sale, Friends of Jacqueline, Race Face Advancement, and then Nate Clark Motorsports for giving me this fast car this weekend. And also Troy, my spotter. Up next for Casey, Tri-Cities Raceway for the Northwest Super Late Model Series Apple Cup 125 on this Sunday. Grant Thompson took his number 54 Roger Dabbs Performance Parts Chevrolet Pro Truck to one of his favorite tracks, Five Flags Speedway. And he showed why by leading all practice session, then turned in the fastest time in qualifying. Grant had to start six with the invert, but took the lead on lap 10 and led the final 15 laps, parking it in victory lane for his second win in as many starts. Let's check in with Grant for his take on the race. Hey everyone, Grant Thompson here. I thought I'd get in the truck and uh, someplace quiet and talk to you guys about our race. So, qualified on the pole, started sixth on our feature, had 25 laps to get to the front, and we did that tonight uh, very patiently and aggressively. At the same time, I want to say 
But uh, I want to thank Rogers Dev Chevrolet for all their help. I want to thank all my guys, Cole, Philip, my dad, my mom, Nolan, just everybody who lays a hand on this truck to make it fast. But uh, I'm excited for the next one. I'm not sure where it is. I will give you guys an update here pretty soon. But uh, for winners tonight at Five Flags, we're on the road to a championship, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Up next for Grant, Pro Late Models at Five Flags Speedway on April 7th. Cole Denton was making his fifth start in his number 46 Legend cars, and this made it at four different tracks. But this weekend, he was at Caffeine and Octane Lanier Speedway, and what turned out to be dual races on Saturday due to the weather outlook for Sunday. For feature race number one, he qualified fourth and finished seventh. And in feature race number two, Cole started eighth and finished eighth. Up next for Cole, Chris Motorsports Park on April 8th. We're going to take our last commercial break. When we come back, we'll check in on Race Face Next drivers, Landon Cox and Jacob Clayton, who were turning some laps in the Sunshine State. Are you already collecting digital cards? Then here's a quick features update from Race Face Digital. Hey, Race Face Digital Collectors. Did you know that we have a couple of new features designed to create more interaction for our valued collectors? First, there is the share feature that will allow you to share your pick collection or an individual card with others. Simply click on the share button in your pick collection or in the view details area for an individual card, then copy and paste the link. How easy is that? Now for the other big news. You now have a storage garage where you can place cards that you might not want others to see. The storage garage can be used to house cards for future use, like selling them on the open marketplace when the card is no longer available or trading them with other collectors. Both of those features are coming soon. I'm Rosalie, and that's the latest update from RaceFace Digital where fan enrollment is always free. Visit us at racefacedigital.com. Hi, race fans. I'm Tegan Nolan, core major driver in the NASCAR U Series, and you're watching Race Face TV. Welcome back. Jacob Clayton was at New Smyrna QMA for round two of the Dixie Shootout Series, where he would compete in three different classes. Jacob won his heat race in heavy Honda, and put all three cars in the A main, finishing fifth in heavy Honda, fifth in World Formula, and fourth in Unrestricted Animal. Up next for Jacob, Talladega Motor Speedway for round one of the NASCAR Youth Series on April 20th through the 23rd. Now Landon Cox was also in New Smyrna for the Dixie Shootout. Landon won his heat races in both his junior animal and Junior Honda and finished second in Junior 160. But as racing would have it, the luck quickly ran out in the A mains. Landon was involved in a wreck on lap one of the Junior Honda, resulting in 11th place finish. But it didn't end there. He was also involved in incidents in the remaining A mains, finishing seventh in both Junior 160 and Junior Animal. Up next for Landon, North Carolina QMA, for the Carolina Clash on April 7th and 8th, and I'm sure that this young man will bounce back. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Jesse Love, who will be back in his super late model at Chris Motorsports Park in Cordell, Georgia on Saturday. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up on demand at raceface.tv and RacingAmerica.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Race Face Digital and start collecting digital cards of your favorite drivers. And remember, Race Face Digital is open to all drivers and fan enrollment is always free. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching. Thank you.